I'm Bob from Delta Maker. We're a local 3D printing company. Brought a couple printers with me tonight over in the next room if you want to see what we're doing. But we've built a, what we call a clean and elegant 3D printer. It's based on a Delta robot platform. So it's optimized for making tall things. I've got a sample around here. So here's something from Thingiverse that we printed. And you know we can go larger than this. But uh, the print quality I think is pretty good for this type of technology. So we want to meet local artists and 3D designers and kind of show them what our printer can do. And uh, yeah, please come over and take a look before, uh, before you leave today. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I saw you guys at Maker Faire. They're really, really cool machines. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, we thoroughly enjoyed Maker Faire. Met a lot of great people there. Uh, so one locally? Yeah, the Science Center here. Yeah. What, like two, two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, just I couldn't get here in time for it. But I, I that was really cool. Mm. Yeah, every vendor we talked to pointed us towards towards you. Excellent. <laughs> Well, you know, we're locals. So I think that's pretty cool for a lot of there's so much creative talent in Orlando and you know to have a local 3D printer vendor I, I think is a cool thing and we're yeah. really looking forward to meeting, you know, some of the local artists, <laughs> designers. Thanks. Wow. Well I guess I have the mic. Um, <laughs> this is cool. Um, I actually have nothing to show. Uh, I'm I was into uh, computers and learning basic on TRS eighties and Commodores in the seventies. Then desktop publishing when Quark was 1.0, Illustrator was 1.0, uh, Photoshop wasn't called Photoshop yet, uh, Excel was not yet available on the PC, it was a Mac first. Um, then uh, <clears throat> got into, started getting into um, graphic design, simple line art drawings and stuff for catalogs. Uh, and then uh, got into the internet, like the year after it became graphic, doing web design and everything. Every one of those things, though, two or three years down the road, anybody that could get a computer <laughs> and had all night and then day to work on it could outpace me, and I kind of, one thing fell away after another. Um, I've always thought since I first saw replicators on Star Trek that this was coming, and um, you know, when it was here a few years ago, I was not, you know, didn't have an extra 10, 20 grand to throw around, but now they're getting affordable, and uh, uh, I uh, have two kids, and we've just been thinking of idea after idea, some of the things that have been mentioned here. Um, and I do, I've been doing eBay for a long time, collectibles, and I'm always in search of just pretty much anything I can get keystone pricing on. And it's a simple formula, buy X to get Y in Z amount of time or whatever. Uh, and you know, again, one after another, the things that were selling well don't, and then you're stuck with stock or whatever. This is just picture perfect for me, computer and techie, has enough artistic to it that yours is unique. Um, I know from my background in marketing that we're moving to a marketing of one and um, love the idea of eventually when they get a little bit better, uh, being able to just grind your bad stuff for old Legos or whatever in your grinder and extrude the thing and have that feed to the printer and then you know send it out. Um, so uh, I really I want to start learning this stuff. Um, and uh, what got me off my uh, off of the crazy idea to, okay, what can I do to do this, was seeing um, a news report on Enable. And uh, it was really more about how Enable, how 3D printers were making things like prosthetics more affordable. But the person that they were talking to specifically had made them for kids and he made one that was like an Iron Man hand. And it, you know, choked no, it up. Maybe it's like, in here. It's, you know, bad enough you lost a hand, now you got a claw or whatever, but this was Iron Man's hand, man. <laughs> this guy now had Iron Man's hand. And I thought it was so cool. And, and the kid, you know, grabbed his hand and said to his mom, I can, I can hold my own hand. So, and I thought, you know, what, what, what better way to practice learning this yeah. stuff? Yeah. Certainly, uh, oh, cool. Yeah, neat. But, yeah. Um, the, you know, so what that, are you talking then, about? You know, Prosthetic? The, uh, the uh, marketing and $200? <laughs> saw so many opportunities, and pretty much anything you can make is Keystone or better. You're talking buy plastic, sell items. So uh, I thought it was great. I could do some good and help. Um, and I started going over my little mental Rolodex. And I'm like, hey, you know, I got a friend that's an engineer doing 3D CAD stuff down in mm -hmm. South Florida. And I know this guy that does this. And uh, my dad's got a company. Maybe he sees some use for the benefit for these products. And um, sure, so I, I, uh, <laughs> I decided to do it. <laughs> and so uh, I don't have a printer yet. I've settled on one. I'm interested in seeing yours, anything local, anything in my price range. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, I'm just eager to, I, I have more questions than things to offer. But even little things around the home, I, I build my own shelves, I do my own lawn. And to be able to put some things like this of my own 
idea in my own space. Uh, I'm redoing my kitchen right now, uh, it would, starting from a window that I bought from the old Snow White building before they restored it, uh, Magic Kingdom. So building stuff around there, doing something like this, I mean, it's, it's like some of you have been saying, you take a picture, you learn the you know, software, one, two, uh, uh, the uh, one, two, three D. I give an auto desk, the, you know, twenty five hundred dollars to talk to us company. It's free this, free that. Auto desk software is, is now free. They give um, us so many, so many tools to play with. You know, when I was working for Apple, I couldn't afford Maya, even though I could use it. But uh, now it's just ridiculous. My, my daughter is playing on one two three creature one two three. She, I picked it up two days ago using my iPad, and uh, it's just it's it's here. I want a part of it. And, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I just I brought that magazine and <clears throat> and it's got that article, so I thought I'd bring that. That's about it. It's about a that uh that little girl has got a two hundred dollar robotic arm and and usually they've been costing tens of thousands of dollars, but but with a three D printing it it costs a lot more a less team of, uh, a couple of researchers in college and they printed it out out of uh, materials i think they just bought some take plastic and, although i I, I really like the uh, the fact that they did it for such a low price but i think uh, I, I would love to see i want to bring some artists in this into the i mean we definitely have good engineers out there but i, I think form and function should be put together and always always playing a a role with each other. I'm a big fan of Buckminster Fuller, as far as like using the least amount but getting the most amount of you know. Uh, that's why like triangulation of mesh works really good because you, you get a perfect tri a triangle is a really good way of creating a very strong. But then again, we have this slicing problem, and I, I think you guys that are just getting into this may not know about this stuff. But um, when you see that when you see prints fail. And um, when, the, when things like when the the, the, uh, the head overheats and that kind of thing, and you, you start getting air prints, all these things are um, we've got materials that we're just starting to really play with, and, and we're extruding them. And there's so much more that we could be we could be applying to that. Um, if we could create algorithms that would actually layer uh, pieces into each other on a molecular level, we would have much stronger bonds, I believe. And I would like to, I don't know, I, I'm hoping that we're gonna be pushing the slicing technology so we'll get, instead of these very linear prints that are always like gonna cleave off at one, you know, they're, they're basically like gonna fracture at every single. Uh, so I, there's a guy out there, I don't know, I forgot his name, but he's doing something where you can basically layer the print it goes up and down, left and right. So you've got all all axes are going into it, and so when he makes the object, the object can actually be layered, sort of like a fiberglass mat. And uh, there's another uh, thing, the materials uh, uh, thing, where they're taking ABS. I think it's ABS plastic. It might be nylon, and they're coating it with graphene, and then putting that through the extruder. So we're layering graphene uh, molecules that are already aligned to each other perfectly inside the plastic and then the, all that stuff is getting you know layered and uh, de deposited on top of each other i think you could combine those two together where you're actually creating like a mat but you're also like layering these things that are already connected on a molecular level we're gonna have extremely strong prints like not just prints but we're gonna have extremely strong whatever we're printing and i think this is going to revolutionize things like we're not going to need um foundries to create massive amounts of metal that we're going to, going to layer in a mold. Like, I, I think we're really looking at the future of manufacturing and scaling it all up is going to be something that's, um, I, I was just thinking, you know, like one of the things that they were, he was saying that I had to go out and buy a whole bunch of printers. Well, if you have one arm that's printing on a print head and you connect it to 15 other arms, you, you could replicate that and not have to buy 15 other controllers for that one motor, that one step. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm just, you know, I'm just talking about how my, you know, how it is. But I'm just saying, like, I think we are, we could replicate this stuff and really be producing some major shit. Like, I, we're, and you think about the amount of energy that's required to get steel. 
um, versus like just, well, all right, having to get the steel molten and then put it into whatever form you want to make, that's a lot of energy to get all that molten steel. And I don't know, I would like to know the energy conversion of like, all right, so we have a baseline steel and we're going to extrude it. How much energy is used to extrude it for the same size shape versus are you actually going to save more by putting it all in a big vat and you know keeping that all up to heat or would just extruding it through like a um you know a basically a, a welding gun kind of thing how much energy are you using for those two uh, those are things that i'm i'm interested in because uh, i would actually like to have my whole thing uh solar powered and you know, like basically do it all as least amount of energy as necessary, and then reusing well, stuff. I saw an article about that. It was, oh, really? It was in the desert, using solar power mm -hmm. to drive these uh, lasers mm -hmm. that would turn the sand into glass yes. to create oh, wow. total. You know, bring nothing. Yeah, yeah. Leave with sand. Right, right. Glass sculpture made out of the sand from there, and they're working on making Same actual case. structure. I build a city in the desert. Yeah. Out of a solar powered. Well, once we got that, we can send them up to Mars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then we, we can make a city before we even get there. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. All right, everybody, you go. Mm. Uh, just, just real quick, I, I'm an industrial designer for my day job. I um, tough to wear the product the design manager there. Right. So I mm -hmm. deal with this stuff all day long. I can't show any of it because it's proprietary, but I, I love this stuff. Uh, but I'm trying to get into it more from the hobby side and mm -hmm. from trying to, you know, actually. Um, maybe we can make some money doing it. Um, really interested in the ceramics. Um, I don't know what the quality is like. I've seen a couple things, but uh, my main interest is making things parametric. So, like, if you go into a store in Shapeways and you say, I want something this size, you give it your parameters, mm -hmm. and then a whole system is built off of that. It's all kind of run through, um, you know, it's all intertwined. So the pieces go together, but it's unique for that person and what they were looking for. So they order, let's say, a dining set, but it's like, Okay, I want it to be square, I want it to be this tall, I want it to be this color, and it just comes out like that. So that would be kind of where I, my interests lie. But.